It's all about Jesus, period. One more time, because we, we, can't, we can't ever get tired of saying that. It's all about Jesus, period. There you go, period. Uh, you realize when you say that, you're making a declaration of who you are, right? You're identifying yourself. Uh, I hope you realize when you're saying that. It's just not a, a slogan we say. It's a declaration of who we are. Really, it's a declaration of, a declaration of who we are and whose we are. So when we say it's all about Jesus, period, we're making a statement, right? An an identity statement. Who am I? I am a follower of Jesus Christ. Who are we? We are followers of Jesus Christ. And uh, we're living in a world where identity is changing quickly. Uh, uh, We're sliding into a secular world. Really, the world's been on this track, but America is catching up very quickly of uh, secularism, if I can say that word properly. So uh, don't worry about how I say it. Just understand what I mean. But anyways, right, uh, we see the world uh, quickly sliding away from identifying with Jesus as their God. Uh, They're quickly sliding away from identifying with family. Uh, and they move away from that. And because now we have a vacuum, as people are leaving the church, as our country is growing more and more away from identifying with Christ, that leaves a vacuum of people searching for what are they going to fill, what are they going to latch onto, what are they going to hold on to to identify as? Because there's the vacuum, right? It pulls us in. Well, if I'm not identifying with Christ, what am I identifying with? Who am I? Whose am I? And this draws in this question. The world goes seeking for that. Now, now, obviously, I, I'm a believer in Jesus, and I think we should be identifying with Jesus Christ. Uh, we should be connecting there, but a lot of people don't. And so a lot of people are hesitant to call themselves even a believer today. People say, oh, I believe in God, but, but I'm not a believer in Jesus, or religion, or church. I say, I'm not a believer in religion or church either. I'm a believer in Jesus, right? I'm a believer in Christ and what he's doing and what's happening. Identity, it's an interesting thing. If you have your Bibles, open up with me to Acts, Acts chapter 2. But we're going to start there today. Uh, By the way, if you do not own a Bible, there are white Bibles out there, uh, somewhere in the chairs, somewhere out there on the patio. You can take one of those Bibles home, okay? We want you to have a Bible. If you own a Bible, leave it for someone else. But if you don't have a Bible, take it home. We want you to have a Bible. Uh, Acts chapter 2, it's on the screen. Uh, Verse 42, it says this, all the believers, so it's talking about those people who've given their life to Jesus Christ. These are believers. Uh, They identify with Jesus. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. And then jump down to verse 47. All the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. In other words, these are people who identified as believers in Jesus Christ. These are people who would say the exact same statement then, which we say today, it's all about Jesus, period, right? We'd say the exact same thing. We would identify together. And for centuries, for years, since Christ established the church in this text that I just read for you, all the way up to near present, the predominant world identified with Jesus or the some kind of faith, if you want to even argue that. But in the last decades, I don't know how long, We've seen people falling away from identifying with Jesus for all kinds of reasons. When I I used to play high school football a long time ago, my coach used to always say there's three important things. Nothing else matters other than these three things. God, family, and football. (laughs) That was it, right? Nothing else matters. God, family, and football. If you're going to have a successful life, You put it in that order, God, family, and football. That's just what the coach said all the time. He beat it into our heads, right? And if we didn't listen, he smacked us. You could could smack your players back then. Anyway, so yeah, God, family, and football. But today, I don't think that holds true. 
I think somewhere along the line, we've dropped God and we've dropped family. Some people still say football. Some people reject the football, right? But we drop those first two things. And our world loses our identity. That was an identity. What am I about? God, family, and football. Well, that was my coach's identity. What is he about? God, family, and football. He identified who is he and whose is he. He's God's, he's his family, and he's football. And today we're quickly abandoning God and we're quickly abandoning the family. And it's leaving us in this vacuum of what are we going to identify with? Who am I and whose am I? And, and this, this leaves us then to choose. Now we're like, okay, what am I going to do, right? I mean, we used to grow up back in the day with, hey, you serve God. You go to church. You worship God. And some people gave their life to Christ and some people didn't, but they still went to church. Now, hopefully, if you're a church today, you're going to give your life to Jesus Christ if you haven't already, because that's what's important. That's how we identify. But today, people don't do that, right? So people are, are scr scrambling to identify. Some people use position. Position, right? Uh, this, this has to do kind of with the work world. What do we say? Well, I'm a doctor, or I'm a teacher, or... I'm a pastor. <laughs> Nobody says that one. Anyways, right? Yeah. Right. yeah. Well, what? Are you crazy? <laughs> Usually you say I'm a pastor and everybody goes, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to another room. See you later. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I don't want to hang around that guy anymore. <laughs> and usually I like saying it after they've cursed three or four times anyways. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, what do you do? I'm a pastor. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't have to apologize to me. Apologize to Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, we identify in these positions. I'm a mom, right? Uh, I, I'm a lawyer. I'm a salesman. I mean, that's position, right? A lot of people cling to positions. A lot of people identify with politics. Okay, that's popular right now, right? Politics. I'm a particular party. Uh, you, you politic people, you eat, breathe, uh, digest politics, right? You know everything about politics. You can't have a conversation without talking about politics. Listen, if you don't, if, if a person doesn't know who they're voting for by now, I mean, where have they been? For crying out loud, I'm tired of the commercials already. Really? Yeah. I don't care anymore. Let's just have the election and get over, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, some of you agree with me, but those of you who are in politics are like, what? Well, this is the most important election ever. Calm down, man. Calm down. I'm not, I'm not attacking you. I'm not attacking you. I'm just saying, some of you, like, that's your identity, and you've picked a party, or you've picked no party, or you've picked some weird party, or you're just, just political all by yourself. I don't know. You're the guy with the stickers. I don't know. Uh, right? Uh, it's just it's what you've done. Some people pick issues, right? It, it, it's, it's not necessarily, I guess it could be tied to politics, but it's not really politics. It's issues, right? Sexuality, that's the issue. And that's all they talk about, and that's all they're going to be about. Or uh, 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 social media, I'm going to be an influencer. Or abortion. Or Israel. Oh, now I'm stepping on people's toes, right? Yeah, it's all we're going to talk about. Or, you know, whatever it is, whatever the issue is. You know, we're going to hammer away at that issue, and that's our identity, and people see us coming, and they, they know what you're going to talk about. Oh, here they come. Here we go. Are you ready? You know, and, and all the facts, and you got them laid out, and you know all the latest stories, and, you know, you, you, you're going to talk all about it. That's, some people identify that way. How about another one? I don't know if it's still in vogue, but vaccines. Oh, there's vaccine people, right? Yeah. See, I'm touching hot buttons because I can tell by your heads already. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, some of you are like, yeah, some of you are like, oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about you, that's what I'm talking about you, man. That's a, yeah, that's, that's you, or, or Larry down the street, or whoever, right? Yeah, uh, and, and, and we divide, we divide, because we identify now, right? Every one of these issues I've told you is there's the opposing side. So there's this side, and there's that side, and, and we divide in our little groups, 
Because this is what identity does. It separates us, and then we separate, and then all of a sudden we go, well, I'm in this camp, or I'm in this group, or I'm on that side, and those are the people in that camp on that side. And we separate, and then we begin to say, well, I'm not like those people, and now all of a sudden we have something to compare ourselves by. And, of course, none of us want to be losers. We all want to be winners. <laughs> So I identify over here, and we're the winners, and we're going to do whatever it takes to win because I have to win, and I can't be a loser, and I'm intelligent, and I always pick the side that wins. So whatever the issue is now, there's the anti-people or the pro-people or whatever, and it's, they're the enemy. And it becomes personal really quick. Not that any of you have made any of these issues personal, right? So yeah, yeah, not at all. Um, and really, it's, it's not just a world problem. It is a church problem. This, I, I wish I could just say it's a world problem when we come to the church and we're all hunky-dory and everything's great. But it's not. It's just as bad inside the church as it is outside the church. And a simple way to tell is look at the family. The church isn't passionate about family anymore. The divorce rate in the church is just as high as outside the church because we're not willing to fight. We're just like, yeah, whatever. It's okay. It's just my first marriage. Well, I didn't know we were planning on a second one. What's, it's just, I thought when I said till death do us part, that meant that's it, buddy. You're in, right? There's no, I don't know. Let me check my schedule. I just plan on this one for five years. We'll see what happens after that, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I, it's just, it's crazy, right? I mean, we see it, right? Uh, some of the fastest, I've said this before, but some of the fastest growing churches in America right now are woke or anti-woke churches. Those are political churches. So woke or anti-woke churches. They're the fastest growing churches in America. Why? Because they choose a side. And then they're preaching a side. And, and, and many of these churches, I mean, I haven't been in, I haven't been in hardly any, any of them. They don't like me. Anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> They're not inviting me to come. So, but I know in a lot of these churches, it's, it's more of a uh, political rally than it is, let's worship Jesus. And, and I always think, well, November 5th is coming. What are you going to preach out af after November 5th? Because now it's another four years. So you got some time there. I, guess, I, mean, I don't know that your person won or your person lost. You're going to rail on that for four years until, I don't know. You know, I, I don't know, but... Uh, we'll see what happens, I guess, after the election. Maybe those will be the fastest shrinking churches. I don't know. Yeah, so, uh, it's, just, it's, just, it's just interesting because people identify this way, right? And we see it. We see people. Why are these the fastest growing churches? Because people are looking for an identity, and they're gravitating towards people like them, and they're choosing a side, and they're vilifying the other side. I mean, it happens all the time. Uh, here, here, right here at Hilltop. Right here at Hilltop. Uh, I, I, I'll tell you my personal story. I say I don't talk about Hilltop. I told you that last week. I lied. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, that's right. Because I'm not using any names, Larry. Anyway, so I'm just kidding. I don't think we have any Larrys here. I hope not. That's right. Just kidding. But uh, uh, per, right, right here at Hilltop, I've been on the patio. And I've had people come up to me on the patio and uh, confront me, all upset. I've had people come up and say, you have got to talk about abortion every single week. Why are you not talking about abortion? They said, well, Bob, maybe you should come around. I've mentioned abortion, right? No, you have to talk about it every single week. This is the most important issue in our world today. It defines us, and, and, and you have to talk about it all the time. And I'm like, well, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about abortion, but I'm about Jesus. No, abortion. Well, okay, now you cross the line. You just <laughs> Jesus and you elevated up there, right? And I've had people come up to me and say, Israel. Israel. You have got to talk about Israel. Why are you not talking? Do you not love Israel? Do you, do you don't care about Israel? You think they're going to hell? You don't believe? I'm like, whoa, simmer down here. Man. Just, I'm fine with Israel, right? I love Israel. But you should talk about it every single week. This is a big book. There's a lot of stuff in here to cover. And I can't talk about something every single week. But people on politics, you should support this candidate or or hate on this candidate. Well, come around. I'm just going to make fun of all of them. <laughs> yeah. Make fun of all the candidates, right? Uh, or issues. You should be talking about certain issues, right? You should be talking about the family. 
You should be talking about homosexuality. You should be talking about transgender. You should be talking about social media. Listen, it happens all the time. And normally, I think, take a deep breath, Dave. Don't yell at them. (laughs) They're missing the point. Because it's all about Jesus, period. Okay, right? We say it all the time. But just because we say it doesn't mean it registers up here. We are about Jesus Christ. And I'm not telling you that any of these issues are not important. I'm not telling you you cannot have an opinion on any of those issues. Have an opinion all day long. You should vote. You should have an opinion. You should seek seek the scriptures. They'll give you answers on all those things. But those are issues that are here today and will be gone tomorrow. But Jesus is forever. We are here to worship Jesus. We are, our identity is in Jesus. He's who we're chasing after. He's who we're we're pursuing. And the problem is a lot of us have personal conflicts because we we get so passionate about our issue that when someone disagrees with us, it's a personal attack. They're personally attacking me. And the easy thing to point out is politics. Politics. There's someone on the other side of the aisle, and we just look at them, and we vilify them because they disagree, and we think, how stupid are they? And you yell at the TV. They can't hear you. They can't hear you, but you yell, and you scream, and we think, these people, they're just evil, wicked people, and you see someone drive by with a bumper sticker, and you're like, I'm going to cut them off because it's a personal insult, right? And the reality is when it becomes personal, we can recognize we have a problem because the issue is personal. Abortion is an issue, but it doesn't define you. Jesus defines us. These issues are, I'm not saying they're not important. I'm just saying our identity is not in the issue. Our identity is in Jesus Christ, right? That's the fill-in. As believers, our identity is, is in Jesus. Our identity is in Jesus. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 3. For we, for we died to this life. Whoa, oh, did you hear that? We died to this life, and our real life is hidden with Christ. That's where our real life, right? It's hidden in Jesus. You know, that would be great to come up with a saying to model this verse. How about... It's all about Jesus. Oh, you fell asleep on me. Someone's phone went off and you got distracted. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, don't, don't point out the person who should have turned off their phone and didn't. You know, it's all right. We don't want to make them feel guilty. Yeah, so uh, they, no, oh, sorry. Anyway, so that's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's all about Jesus, period. All right. Tell them, call me later. I'm, I'm, I'm at church. Anyways, right? Uh, guys, we've received a new identity. The moment we gave our life to Jesus Christ, you received a new identity. You are not David anymore. That's me. You're not you anymore. You are a child of the living God, God Almighty. And he's given you a new life, and it's already begun. You don't have to wait till you die although that's the crossover when we get rid of all the pain and the agony and all that stuff. Praise Jesus. Of course, we got to go through death to get there. That scares us mostly, but right? But we have a new identity in Jesus Christ. That's what he's done. And think about it, all these issues that we identify with. So if you win it and you change the world, awesome. But if you lose your soul, what does it matter? What does it matter if we win every election? What does it matter if we win the argument on abortion? What does it matter if we change the world on issues of today, but we lose our soul and we send other people and we condemn them to hell because we refuse to love them and we allow our love to turn cold and turn to hatred and anger because now we've drawn a line and we said, you're on that side, go to hell. I don't care about you. I only care about us over here and winning. That's a problem because God did not call us to divide. He called us to unify. He didn't call us to separate. 
He called us to go and save those who are lost. He called us to share his good news. Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. So why are we drawing a line and condemning? We've lost our identity. What are we about? Whose are we? And who are we? Right? That, that's the question. This means that uh, we have to give up our old identities. If we have a new identity in Christ, we have to give up our old identities. Oh, now we're getting personal. Because some of you struggle big time with this. Giving up your old identity. Uh, if Jesus is all that matters, period, then I have to give up other stuff that I think matters. And I have to elevate Jesus more important than those things. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Again, the old is gone. The new life has begun. We have to let go of the old. A lot of us give our life to Christ and then cling to the old. Now Jesus, fix all this stuff. Make it work the right way. And Jesus says, let go of it. Move forward. You have a new identity. That's who you were. That's not who you are anymore. You now are a child of the living God. Uh, yet it's hard for us to let go, isn't it? You've heard the saying, when they pry it out of my dead, cold hand, then I'll let go. And some of us are like that with Christ. But this issue, Lord, it's so important. Jesus says, well, I got it. Trust me. It cracks me up about Israel. People come to me all the time about Israel. Israel, Israel. I'm like, yeah, what do you want me to do about it? I mean, I'm way over here in America. They're halfway around the world. Do I like what's happening? No, I don't like what's happening. So, so what do I do? I do what we can all do. I pray. I pray for them. And I pray that God's will is done. You know, this Bible's full of Israel being invaded by other nations and Jesus rising up and taking care of it. So, so do we, we think, oh, that was just in the old days? Jesus isn't going to take care of it today? I mean, do you not watch the news and already see the miracles Jesus have done in Israel? So what are you worried about? Do you not believe in an almighty God who's working things out? So what are you worried about? That's just one issue. I'm sorry, I'm poking at that one. But, right? There's lots of issues. What, what are we worried about? There's, this world is a wicked, evil world. But my identity is not in the world. My identity is in Christ. And I'm all about Jesus, period. So I'm going to pursue him with all my heart. And I'm going to trust him. And I'm going to seek to love people, even if I disagree with them. But when we get on sites, it's personal. It's personal. And then we come to church. And we're supposed to love each other. But we start talking to people. And, and someone disagrees. Or someone says, well, well, what about this? And you get offended. I'm offending some of you right now. Because it's personal, and you're like, yeah, you just don't understand. It's personal, and you think I'm personally attacking you. I'm not personally attacking you, but it's so personal. And then you want to fight because you want to be right, so you're going to attack now. And we do the same thing in the church, and we divide in little groups, and we argue and we bicker. You know, Jesus, uh, 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 the devil doesn't have to destroy the church he just has to get the church to become passionate about some other issue other than Jesus, and we'll divide up ourselves. <laughs> that was all the time. The devil knows what he's doing. He's, he's like, these people are stupid. No problem, right? And, and it blows my mind. Now, this is the pastor in me, but it blows my mind that there are some people who are so passionate about an issue, so passionate about an issue. They, they have yard signs. They have bumper stickers. They wear T-shirts. They, they uh, know all the news stories. They can regurgitate it. They know all the arguments. Uh, they give their money. They donate to support. There's, there's people who are so passionate, and they do all this stuff, and then they come to church, and the church says, hey, we want you to volunteer and serve, and we want you to invest here, and they act like you're trying to cut off their right arm. <laughs> you want my money? What? You want me to serve? What? You're just supposed to do a sermon, and I just show up and feel good and go home. Well, I bet you came to the wrong week, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And people are so offended. 
that the, how dare the church ask me for money? They're just, they're just greedy and money grubbing. And, well, but your issue, you have no problem. I think we have an identity problem. That's a clear sign right there. I'm willing to invest over here with passion, but in the very thing that I say changed my life and I'm pursuing Christ and the only thing Jesus established on the face of the earth, I refuse to support? Sounds like an identity problem. Some of us need to take a look at the mirror and go, what, what's really number one in our life? Is it really all about Jesus, period? Or is it really about my issue and Jesus is somewhere down here? I mean, that's an identity problem. See, when the church identifies, uh, when the church's, uh, sorry, when the church's identity is under Jesus, it unifies us. When the church's identity is under Jesus, when we all come together and make our identity Jesus, it will actually unify us. There's too much separation. We should be unified. That doesn't mean we all think the same thing. That doesn't mean we all agree in the same issues. But what it means is we're all about Jesus Christ. And he is number one. He's number one. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Even before God, Jesus, made the world, God loved us and he chose us. That's pretty cool. Jesus chose us even before we were created in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us, bring, pay attention, bringing us to himself. In other words, he unifies us, a whole bunch of different people who think differently, who look differently, who acted differently, who have different backgrounds. He brought us together under what? The cross, the blood of Christ. And we choose to give him our lives. And he brings us together as one family under Jesus. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure to do it. Your God loves you. You're number one to him. You're on the top of his list. You are the most important thing to him. He's pursuing after you. And even those who don't believe in him yet, he's still pursuing after them. And he's pleading, he's begging, please give your life to Jesus because he knows what the results are. See, we recognize this and we identify, it unifies us together. Jesus is who we're about. And then once we're unified under Jesus, it allows us to talk about issues. And it's no longer personal. We can talk about politics, it's not personal. We, we can talk about abortion. It's not personal. We can talk about homosexuality. It's not personal. We can talk about sexuality. It's not personal. We can talk about Israel. And it's not personal. And once it's not personal, we can have open conversations. And we can come to solutions. We, we can come, how should we best handle it as a church to represent Jesus Christ? And it's not about winning or losing because we've already won. We have Jesus. We're already victorious. So now it's just a matter as a church is one voice under Christ. Lord, how are we going to move forward to bring your glory through this situation? Because issues are here today and they're gone tomorrow. This world has had plenty of issues, things that we would never talk about. If we could all go pull our grandparents who are now dead and say, what were the issues of your day? They would be different than the issues of today. But Jesus is the same. He's the same. He is our identity. And once we identify in him, we don't have to worry about the other stuff. We pray about it. We respond. We seek Christ through it. And he will guide us. Identity in Jesus frees us. Identity in Jesus frees us. We're not trapped anymore by an issue. And some of you are so embedded in an issue, you, you're tired of it. You want to let it go, and you don't even know how. You're tired of it. It's beating you down. Open up and give it to Jesus. It's freeing. Uh, think of how free it is. We now can talk about stuff and not take it personal. Someone can criticize us, and we take it with humility. Oh, that's a good point. I never thought of it that way, right? It's not personal anymore. Someone disagrees with us, and we go, oh, you know, actually, you got a good point there. I don't agree with everything you said, but, you know, this is an interesting point. You know, what about this and this? And it's no longer 
an attack. It's, hey, I'm free in Christ because Jesus now identifies me. And I don't have to worry about winning or losing. I'm more concerned about the glory of Jesus Christ. And yes, vote. Yes, issues matter. Yes, you can have an opinion. But they don't have to identify you. You can have an opinion all day long. They don't have to identify you. I mean, sports, right? You can like bad teams and I can like good teams. That's okay. <laughs> it doesn't identify me, right? Furthermore, if my team wins or loses, it really changes nothing about my life. It changes nothing. But Jesus changes everything. He frees us, guys. Put your identity in Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8. Verse 1 and 2, so now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And because we belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed us from the power of sin that leads to death. We have to live differently. We cannot become angry, bitter people. We have to stand in the love of Jesus Christ. We have to allow Christ to flow through us. We have to live through the spirit. And we could talk about all kinds of issues and still love people and put our arms around them and say, I love you. I disagree, but I love you. It's not personal because Jesus who identifies me. He has radically changed me. And I don't have to be angry anymore. And we can change this world by now instead of being, oh, those nasty, mean Christians who trash everybody on social media, we can be, man, those Christians who love Jesus and show compassion to people. Instead of being, oh, they're a political agenda believers. Oh, no, they care about politics, but Jesus is their God and they serve him. Or, oh, this issue is so important, they're going to condemn and and destroy people's lives because they hate them so much. It can be, no, this issue is important to them, but they love people in Jesus Christ and they believe in restoration and healing. It changes. We have to live differently. We have to identify with Christ in our life. If we don't, we're missing the boat. We're missing the boat. I know your issue is important to you, but Jesus is number one. Period. It's all about Jesus. Period. No matter what. And think about it. Jesus went to the cross and he shed his blood for your issues. He shed his blood for the people who oppose your issues. And he wants you to be passionate about his church. He wants you to love people, even the mean, nasty people, even the jerk people, even the stupid people. He wants you to love them. And it's better to change the world by getting people to receive Jesus Christ because that's what will change the way they think. This book is what changes the way people think. We allow Christ to transform our minds. No one's going to transform their mind without Jesus Christ. And we're not going to bring anybody to Jesus Christ by hating on them. Love. Love. Just like Jesus, who's number one in our life, did. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for dying on the cross, Jesus. We thank you for shedding your blood for us. May we always identify as your child. Jesus, you are who matters. Without you, we are nothing. We have nothing. Issues are irrelevant without you, Jesus. And I pray that everyone in this room chooses you, Jesus. If you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, I encourage you. I I know your issue is important, but what is the point of winning your issue and losing your soul? Eternity is forever. Your issues here today will be gone tomorrow. But eternity is forever. I encourage you to give your life to Jesus Christ. It starts with a simple prayer. You can pray it right there in your seat. Pray it in your mind. Pray it in your home. You just something like this. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose again. I believe you're alive right now. If that's true, that means you're God. And if you're God, that means I've messed up. I've I've tried to do it my way. It hasn't worked. Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. 
I don't want to do it my way anymore. I want to do it your way. I want to take on your identity, Jesus. And I want to live for you for this moment forevermore. May I be forevermore known as a child of the living, almighty, holy God, Jesus Christ. And may you be glorified. Help me believe in you, Lord. Help me to live for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.